Okay, I think everyone is here today. So, so now I'm gonna start the chapter 20. So we are almost close, close to be done with this book club and then. So today I'm gonna I'm gonna try to I'm gonna explain the chapter 20. So chapter 20 is not that long. It's only three pages kind of thing. So it is not not that many contents. It's just kind of a summarizing what have been uh studying so far about especially for the part three of the, this book, like a data set based kind of a exploratory modeling method. So we already cover most of the part of the every details. So but this one is uh, just kind of a give us kind of a, some of the guidance about the how we can use this one all of the these kind of model that, that we have learned so far more efficient way and then uh more in a in a more comprehensive way. So in here it says about the because we even if we can actually uh, learn study each of the these several techniques separately, but this technique is not really used separately because it's a kind of a combining. So combining the it combine application of the each these kind of technique to the one specific problem gonna be help us to the more comprehensive understanding about the what our data set is about and then what's the insight that data set has, right? So so it, it is more kind of important like like this set combine all of the different insight offered by each technique into the more holistic overview. So excuse me. So it is it is much better if we can combine and use all of the maybe these matter together for the one specific question that might be give us the more comprehensive answer. So as you can see here, it's the figure 20.1 actually shows about the all of the graph graph outcomes, uh, like a deliver groups that we produced and created uh, in the previous chapters. So in the first law is more about the performances. So that means how how goodness of fit or how how good, how well uh the each each model or model gonna be fit into the, our data set and then uh, how those has the strong predictive power kind of thing. So one is the simple way we can see is a kind of a AUC a area on the curve or are you ROC kind of a curve like a like a this kind of a curve and then under the under the area actually presenting about the extent of the extent of the uh predictive power, right? So and then also we can we we also thinking about the okay which very which exploratory variable has the uh stronger strongest or strong strong predictive power to predict the uh, some of the survival rate in uh rate of the passengers in the Titanic case, Titanic data in this case. So as you can see here, like uh, various important importance measurements gonna be give us in case of the Titanic data set, gender and class and age is the top three uh exploratory variable that has the very strong predictive power to estimate the likelihood of the a passenger being survived in the that Titanic tragedy. And then the second one is the profile kind of thing. So it's a kind of a more like a in here like a critical cutoff, like a to 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 estimate about the variable effect. Like what's the cutoff for the prediction power in specifically and also what kind of a categorical variable gonna be give us to the more like a threshold to the estimate the predictive power of the likelihood and then what's the in the third one like model diagnostic is how biases in there across to the age right and so these are the also we cover and then we also look at these each graphs and then how we can how we interpret the or each of the result 
And then the third one is a kind of a distribution of the each uh, exploratory uh, uh, variable, like a distribution by age in the first one. And then a uh, uh, second one, I cannot remember what is this, but third one is a kind of a gender kind of thing. And then the third, uh, fifth, I think the second one is the fair, I guess. And then, and then, and then last one in here is that this one is a class, right? So based on that, we can also able to uh, figure out the, what's the, depending on the, this kind of distributions, what is the, what is the survival rate gonna be buried across to the age or fair or gender or class, et cetera. So all of the, these kind of uh, uh, technique gonna be uh, uh was used or used to understand the, what our data set actually provide the insight right so all of the these things actually aims to the explore to the some of the insight comprehensive insight is uh, of the data set we analyzed and then like I said so in here so Actually, this 20.2 is a kind of a very, very insightful and very useful because uh, whenever we have a base knowledge and then a data set and then a, this knowledge and data set gonna be allows us to the, develop the sum of the predictive model. And then a, that predictive model gonna be produced the prediction outcome, right? And then after that, we actually heading back to the model for the, this prediction outcome, like uh, by analyzing the these prediction outcomes, that that interpretation of the predictive outcome gonna be give us to the sum of the improvements of the our model, and then uh, that kind of improvement gonna be give us to the more insight and and strengthen our knowledge of the data set. So each part of the these things is a kind of a very iterative process, and also when we predictive outcome going to be feedback into feedback into the model again, which is the what they call the feedback loop for the iteration process. So in here, it said actually in here, the modeling is the an iterative process. And then uh, this book seems like to the, until we can get to the sum of the converging, converging outcomes, we have to be keep iterating this kind of a process to until we get to the sum of the what is to the sum of the converging convergence, like a model convergence. But but the thing is in practice, you know, maybe when you try to do the this kind of a process, this kind of explore, explanatory technique process, in in practice. It is sometimes very difficult to keep iterating your model by using the and keep iterating the, your model until you get to the sum of the model components. And also, it is sometimes very inefficient to keep iterating your model. Like, uh, for example, if you have a lot of uh, maybe hundred or thousands of exploratory variable you have to consider with the millions or tens of millions or even billions of rows. So which is the if you have a very big data set with the thousands of the exploratory potential exploratory variables and billions of rows as an observation, it actually takes a lot of a computational kind of a intensive kind of process to, to iterating the model one time or twice or three times. So, so in my case, like uh, for example, like uh, in my urban planning field, we actually using this kind of process when we try to develop the, some of the predictive kind of a travel behavior model. But the thing is, uh, travel understanding the travel behavior model and then the predictive the number of trips by transportation mode or depending on the road network system actually has the uh, uh, include the uh, it requires 
a lot of the big data observation data set with a lot of uh, exploratory variable to consider. In that case, iteration, iterating of the model by one time at one time or twice is a very, very time consuming process. So in this case, even if we cannot uh, achieve the modeling of convergences, maybe sometimes we can try to limit our number of max, maximum number of the iteration to get the predictive outcome and then uh, just kind just kind of a just kind of analyzing the sensitivity or bias sensitivity analysis to examine the bias of the that predictive outcome. So like I said, so iteration, if you can iterating your model repeatedly until you get to the modeling convergences, it will be okay. But sometimes in practices, in practice, if you have a, a lot of a columns or a lot of a observation role, it sometimes may not be possible. So in that cases, some predictive model process is gonna be limited to their maximum number of the iteration. And after the that, after the that, uh, when the maximum number of the iteration is reached, we can just compare and analyzing those uh, predictive outcome for the each iteration process, and then try to try to see the what's the what's the biases and the what's the variant variation will be. So, so you have so like I said in here you actually have to be keep in mind that there is also kind of a very trade, some of the trade-off, like a get to the, reaching to the model convergences and try to computationally modeling efficiency. So you have to keep in mind those things. Any thoughts on, any thought on this or any thought about this? Okay. So let's talk about the next one. So next one is uh, just kind of a, uh, okay, so now we have uh, this kind of a process and then based on that, how we can, we can try to do this one is a uh, more efficient and then uh, get to the more insight is that depending on the, what kind of a problem and then you know, what kind of a data set characteristic we have. So 20.2 20, 20 is a uh, kind of, uh, okay, first one is a uh, kind of a, uh, uh, our data set is the training and then the testing data set exploration. So in that case, maybe even if we can have a modeling performances assessment, we can actually conducting the each uh, modeling performance assessment task uh, using the training and testing data separately. And then we, when we testing, when we do the modeling performance testing by using the training and testing data separately, and then if there is a, a, any of a kind of a significant differences between between those outcome, you have it's a kind of a sign of the sign of the uh some of the re, there might be the some of the region that uh that has uh for for the, those kind of a significant differences. So we have to check out the why these differences come from, and then, then that act finding identifying the those reasons gonna be the good way to improving the our model, and then uh, that is actually one of the sign of the shift for the their variable distributions, what is called the data drift. So that means if testing if modeling performance assessment is the quite differences uh, quite different between the training and test data set, you must find the why this thing, this occurs. And then you have to make sure to the, you have to include those sources of the differences to, to get to the model convergences. And then the uh, next one is the correlated exploratory variable. So as we see in the previous chapter, we also see that there are, uh, we actually conducting the, this kind of explanatory modeling analysis only for the single, exp just um, primary for using the, using the single explanatory variable, right? But the thing is, 
there must there definitely must be the some of the interaction among the explanatory variable and then uh, some of the variable has the highly correlated like a class and fair in in case of the Pythonic data set fair and class is a kind of a very very correlated right so higher class uh, uh, class ticket gonna be the more much expensive fare had to be paid, right? So those kind of joint analysis of the group or two or three or more than the two explanatory variable, sometimes necessary. And then uh, these can be done by the what is called the accum uh, accumulated local profile or partial dependent dependency profile method. These two methods actually allows us to the some of the uh, considering the correlation between the variable, right, into the model. And then it, in case of the AM profile, we can even use the some of the interactive term of the two, ex, two explanatory variables into account into the depth analysis. So by using the, those techniques, we can also think about the uh, some of the more interactive kind of effect of the two or more explanatory variable in the model and then how those things affect it to the prediction, predictive power of the model or maybe interpretation of the result. And then a final one is a kind of a, what is called the champions and challenger analysis, like a comparison of the model. So, I think that in the previous two, two chapters, we actually focusing on about the, even if we can uh, analyzing or interpret the, our data set by using the different model, if we can, uh, if that model result has the similar outcome, we can actually compare to the, compare across the each modeling techniques, right? So it's about the comparison of the model per se. So, by comparison, these kind of model, we can gain a more important insight that can be possible to the improvement of the one of one or some of the our model. Like for example, when we try to analyzing the apartment pricing prediction data, we actually see that compared to the random forest and linear regressions, random forest actually able to catching the U shape, the kind of a price variations, but linear, simple linear regression, just only kind of a linear regression, right? It is not that, uh, it, it could not uh, capture the, that kind of a U-shape or those kind of relationship, which producing the sum of the biases of the result. So if we can compare to the, these two outcomes, like a random forest and simple linear regression outcome, we can thinking about the, okay, in case of the simple linear regression model, how we can improve the, this model much better. Like uh, include, do we have to include a more explanatory variable or is there any kind of a, maybe interact, interaction terms should be used? Or do I have to, do I have to check the other modeling diagnosis to improve the, our simple regression model? So those kind of a comparison also give us to the more insight about the how based on the interpretation of the one model, how how interpretation of the, the other modeling tech models outcome gonna be improved based on the based on the one model or others. So this is the end of the chapter 20. So it's a very very short and simple chapter. And then I think the 21 and 22 is also quite quite simple and then a kind of thing. So is there any questions so far? Anything? No, great. Thanks for sharing that, that process.